Hi, I'm Neil Enoch, and welcome to Train Talk TV, the podcast about all things railroad. This week, we're in Squamish, British Columbia, at the West Coast Railway Association, and behind me is 2860 in their brand new roundhouse. We'll be talking about the museum here and their collection and what they're doing. And we'll be talking about our MakerBot experiment a little more. We've got it working, although we haven't made any train bits yet. Well, the West Coast Railway Heritage Park is home to the West Coast Railway Association and their new, brand new roundhouse. They have an impressive collection, over 65 pieces of rolling stock, a dozen different locomotives, a station set in the mountains of Squamish, British Columbia. Quite a lovely place, even on a rainy day, stuff for the kids to do. But the pride and joy is, of course, 2860 CPs, one of CP's roaming ambassador steam engines. It's housed in a brand new roundhouse. Um, it's probably the newest roundhouse built in Canada. It's not a function, not functional, though. I don't see any steam vents. It could get a little, uh, could get a little smoky in there if they fired 2860 up inside. But it does make a great event center. Should be wonderful for promotions and. Uh, events to be held in the roundhouse and that is not lost on them for a fundraiser. <laughs> also in the roundhouse there are several uh, antique cars uh, with uh, various ref stages of refurbishing going on, examples of uh, some exhibits and uh, some of the stages of refurbishing. There was nobody on hand to give us the guided tour while we were there that particular day we came in the middle of the week off season so that's kind of to be expected. But we did give ourselves the walkthrough and there's a fair bit of audio, visual, interactive uh, communication going on and uh, just having the chance to just look around was actually pretty good. My family quite enjoyed it. We also got to walk through the refurbishing shops where they're working on a couple more pieces. Uh, some, in, well, let's just say in various stages of working. And then out into the yard to view some of the on-tour exhibits. This one car had a full car of model railroad exhibit. Uh, there were other cars with private collections. And then my favorite was the postal car. And it's uh, fully set up as a postal car running on the run, I think, between Calgary and Vancouver. The city names are defined. It just shows how it used to be done. And I've... Uh, not seen it done quite so well before. It was an eye-opening experience for me and my family. After we were done our post office tour, we headed out into the yard to see what the other rolling stock they had kicking around was. We've got a fair collection, like most any museum, they're all in various stages of repair and needing repair, and fully refurbished too, some of them. They have an impressive collection of Bud rail cars. I counted four, but I couldn't tour the whole yard. They may have more. And my family got to uh, clamber aboard some pieces of equipment, which was fun. They had a good time. And uh, unfortunately, while we were there, the mini rail was not running that particular day. They were working on the tracks, so we did not get to enjoy that. But it looks like a nice setup. I'll have to go back and try that another day. Well, we're here with our MakerBot, Thingomatic, which we've affectionately nicknamed Tom for Thingomatic. Uh, Edward got it together in about 16 hours, and he's a bit of a bright boy when this stuff is concerned, so if you're going to get one, you might want to leave a little longer than that. And then he dropped over the other night and gave us some lovely green LEDs for the Super Train train show in Calgary this weekend. We're actually going to have the Thingomatic at the train show. Check our website for information on the show. Drop by and have a visit, and we'll be making stuff with it all during the show. Anyway, we got it together, and we thought we'd see what can we make with it. So the first thing we output right away as soon as we built it was this little castle, and it came out pretty good. We had some issues. We had to do some calibration, which we did, and uh, pretty much after that, Edward let me play. He just brought it over, and we kind of just made stuff. So we tried some of the uh, things that are on the website, the basic things uh, that catch people's attention, Lego blocks. Um, we tried a uh, coffee cup. I uh, decided not to print it full size, so there you go. And uh, the uh, ever popular hand solo in carbonite. <laughs> and then we decided we'd turn our hand to train things, so we wanted to see what was out there. Now, these designs, everything you've seen here and most of what I'm going to show you, come off a website called Thingiverse, which is a collection of thousands of things people have made and posted so that you can make as well if you have a thingomatic. And this is a piece from a Thomas the Tank Engine bridge. It's about 15 pieces. Takes about four hours to print, but you get a nice little bridge and you can make it whatever length you want when you're done. Um, not too much else out there. We went a little further to Google SketchUp, found an AC4400, shrunk it down and tried to make a T-gauge model. 
It's not a very good model, but it does kind of look like an AC4400. We took a scale house and shrunk it down. That one is T-gauge and it actually looks pretty detailed. Some paint would make that work. Um, and then we decided to go a little further and uh, we knew that Cribscapes was, uh, our, our sponsor was looking for some cross bucks for uh, cribbage board pegs, so we came up with these for them. And one of the things we had to do during the process was calibrate. This is a very important step. This is a calibration block. Again, it's on Thingiverse. You can download it. It gives you an idea of the kind of slots and walls and overhangs and curves and holes that you can get away with you know, fairly accurately. So we did that. Now we've saved probably the funnest thing for last. It's so good it's loaded in their software as a demo. And uh, rather than tell you, I'm just going to show you what it is. Well, we wanted to go a bit faster because the MakerBot is a wonderful machine, but it is not a fast machine. It's uh, partially due to the limitation in the technology of how fast can you lay down plastic. It does a fantastic job. Um, there's lots of room for improvement, and much of that improvement will come in its usage. And that's one of the reasons we want to show it off and uh, get modelers' feedback as to what can this thing do for train buffs. So let's get back to the project at hand. Here it comes. And there we go. Right up, hot off the press. <laughs> it's even got the little ball inside the whistle. And that's the kind of thing the Thingomatic can do. Hopefully we can find similar train applications for it. Drop by our booth at Super Train. We'll probably make a whistle or two and some of these other things. If you're in Calgary, Super Train is this Saturday and Sunday, April 16th and 17th. Do drop by. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for joining us. Our sponsor this week is Cribscapes Collectible Cribbage Boards, unique 3D railroad cribbage boards for the railroader in your life. If you'd like to have a look, check them out online at www.cribscapes.com. Be sure and follow us at Train Talk TV on Twitter, www.traintalktv, or give us an email at info at Train Talk TV. Tell us about your story. Maybe we'll build an episode around it. Thanks for watching. Bye.